Our Bible lesson today is going to be about God, our caring creator. Genesis 1-1 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And we are on letter C this week. I want to read to you from a psalm, Psalm 95. And um, you can stop the video and find this in your Bible or ask your mom or dad to help you if you need help. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, the great King above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands formed the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. We are the people he watches over, the flock under his care. Or another version says, we are the people he um, cares for of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Psalm 95 in verse 4 is telling us he holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. So let's sing a song that you know and then I'm going to teach you a song that maybe you don't know. But here, this is it. God has the whole world in his hands, right? He's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got, world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister. In his hands, he's got you and me, brother. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the little bitty baby. In his hands, he's got the little bitty baby. In his hands, he's got the little bitty baby. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. And Psalm 95 um, two songs have been written using these words, and I want to teach you one of those songs today from verse 1 through verse 4. They use uh, these ex exact from this psalm of the Bible. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, he made it and his hands form the dry land. Now you can stop the video and replay that if you want to um, learn that song a little bit better, okay? We're going to go on and we're going to talk about our caring creator and what he created. Now I'm not going to sing the songs for creation with you because I did that on another video um, back in March or April, I think. But I do want to read you from one of my favorite uh, children's Bible story books, and I've shown you this before, the Jesus Storybook Bible, because the whole thing, the whole Bible, is all about Jesus and God's plan to send Jesus. So I'm going to read to you, and then I'll show you some pictures. This is called The Beginning, A Perfect Home. In the beginning, there was nothing to fear. In the, sorry, in the beginning, there was nothing. Nothing to hear, nothing to feel, nothing to see. Only emptiness and darkness and nothing but nothing. But God was there and God had a wonderful plan. I'll take this emptiness, God said, and I'll fill it up. 
Out of the darkness, I'm going to make light. And out of the nothing, I'm going to make everything. Like a mommy bird flutters her wings over her eggs to help her babies hatch, God's spirit hovered over the deep, silent darkness. He was making life happen. God spoke. That's all. And whatever he said, it happened. God said, Hello, light. And light shone into the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. You're good, God said, and they were. Then God said, hello, sea, hello, sky, and a great space opened up wide and deep and high. You're good, God said, and they were. Then God said, hello, land, and there, splashing up through the oceans, came cliffs, mountains, sandy beaches. You're good, God said, and they were. Hello, trees, God said. Hello, grass and flowers, and everything everywhere burst into life. He made buds bud, shoots shoot, flowers flower. You're good, God said, and they were. Hello, stars, God said. Hello, sun. Hello, moon. And whizzing into the darkness came fiery globes spinning around and around, whirling orange and purple and golden planets. You're good, God said. And they were. There's a fly buzzing around in here bothering me. Hello, birds, God said, and with a fluttering and flapping and chirping and singing, birds filled the skies. Hello, fish, God said, and with a darting and dashing and wriggling and splashing, fish filled the seas. You're good, God said, and they were. Then God said, hello, animals, and everyone came out to play. The earth was filled with noisy noises, growling and gobbling and snapping and snorting and happy skerfuffling. You're good, God said, and they were. Whoops, I was hiding something there, sorry. God saw all that he had made and he loved them and they were lovely because he loved them. But God saved the best for last. From the beginning, God had a shining dream in his heart. He would make people to share his forever happiness. They would be his children and the world would be their perfect home. So God breathed life into a man and named him Adam. And then he created Eve from Adam's rib. When they opened their eyes, the first thing they ever saw was God's face. And when God saw them, he was like a new dad. You look like me, he said. You're the most beautiful thing I've ever made. God loved them with all of his heart, and they were lovely because he loved them. And Adam and Eve joined in the song of the stars and the streams and the wind and the trees, the wonderful song of love to the one who made them, to God, just like we read about in Psalm 95. Their hearts were filled with happiness and nothing ever made them sad or lonely or sick or afraid. God looked at everything he had made. Perfect, he said, and it was. But all the stars and mountains and oceans and galaxies and everything were nothing compared to how much God loved his children. He would move heaven and earth to be near them, always. Whatever happened, whatever it cost him, he would always love them. And so it was that the wonderful love story began. The love story of God being the caring creator made everything 
just spoke it into existence. That's our God. But the love story began because not only did he create everything, but then something happened. Eve listened to the serpent, disobeyed God, and sin entered the world. And because of that, we needed a savior, a deliverer. And that's our D word for this week. This week we're doing two letters. Divine Deliverer. Now, let's think about this. What is a deliverer? What does the word divine mean? mean sorry, I'm getting tongue-tied today. Stop the video and ask your mom or dad or tell your mom or dad what you think divine means. Divine means holy. Okay? Holy. So God is divine. He is holy. He is perfect set apart. There's nobody else like him. Okay. And we're going to read some verses that maybe will help you, or I'm just going to remind you, um, first before I read these verses, um, of what a deliverer might be. Okay. All right. Let's look at this picture. Can you figure out what that picture is about? What Bible story does that remind you of? Okay, let me give you one more hint, okay? Or maybe two more hints. There. And there. Noah, right? God delivered Noah. He was a deliverer to Noah because Noah and his family were saved from the flood. God delivered them. Okay? So we'll come back to that word. We'll keep talking about this word, but I'm wanting you to think yourself of what this means. Okay, the next one I'm going to show you is this deliverance. Um, see if you can figure this one out. That one might be a little harder. Let me turn the page and show you. There, does that help? God delivered Moses and the Israelites from Egypt through the Red Sea. He delivered them. Okay, and then here's one more that I want to show you. Okay. Got to turn to the page here. Just a second. Okay. See if you can figure this one out. Hmm. Who could that be? Who could that be? All right. Try this one. God delivered David from Goliath, the giant, right? Who wanted to kill him and kill all of the Israelite people. So God delivered them from the flood, the Egyptian people, and through the Red Sea. 
from Goliath. What does delivered mean? He set them free. He let them be free. Okay. Um, when you have a delivery man come, the delivery is something that they bring you, right? And the person who brings it to you is the deliverer. Well, God is our deliverer and he sets us free. I have a really simple song to go with that. God is our deliverer, deliverer, deliverer. God is our deliverer, he sets us free. God is our deliverer, deliverer, deliverer. God is our deliverer, he sets us free. Now, what does he deliver us from, you might say? We didn't need delivered from a flood or through the middle of the sea or from a giant, but we need it delivered from our sins, right? Jesus died on the cross so that we could be delivered from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light, back into that relationship, back into that one perfect place with God that was started in the beginning when he created the world. So we needed to deliver. <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to share with you um, where you can find um, the uh, words about deliverer. And I want to share with you a couple psalms, okay? The first one is Psalm 107 and verse 6. 107 and verse 6. I keep turning too many pages. Lord, help. They cried in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Or in other words, he rescued them from their distress. Okay, Psalm 34. And you can stop the video on these and look these up with your uh, parents or on your own. 34, verse 4. I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. So, delivering us, freeing us, would be another word from our fears. And then Psalm 22, verses 4 and 5. The psalmist writes, Our ancestor trusts our ancestors trusted in you and you rescued them. You delivered them and they were saved. They cried out to you and they trusted in you and were never disgraced. Again, that's talking about in the past. So with Moses and the children of Israel from other um, times that the Israelite people had to uh, fight uh, when they went into the land of Canaan and God delivered them. And then the last one I want to read you is 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 45 and 46. And this is what David said to Goliath, that Philistine giant. David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you and deliver me, and I will kill you and cut off your head and give your bodies to the birds and wild animals so that the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. So God delivers his people, and he wants to be your deliverer. So this week we did letter C and letter D. Caring Creator, 
Divine Deliverer. I want to read you one more verse before we close. And that is from Romans chapter 11. And this is talking about Jesus delivering us. Romans 11 verse 26. So all Israel will be saved as the scriptures say. The one who delivered will come from Jerusalem and will turn Israel away from ungodliness. This is my covenant with them, and I will take away their sins. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering us, for paying that price for us to be delivered from sin so that we could be back in relationship with you, God, so we could worship you and pray to you. Um, that is such a great, great gift, such a great, great thing. And I hope that you will thank God and worship God and enjoy God this week. As fall starts to come, the temperatures are getting cooler. Notice the beauty uh, that's around you and the changing leaves and the colors um, in the mums and the pumpkins and the gourds of the season of autumn. Okay, have a great week. Bye.